just done the neck rolls and we've done the shoulder rolls. Yeah. And then we're going to do the arm swings. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And reverse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Just spread your feet out wide, and we're going to go like this. Just Swing our arms and lift your foot like when you're swinging. This gives you a spinal twist as well as like create this like sense of weight in your arms. Just swing them, let them loose. Okay. Hip circles, hands on your hips. Five times in one direction, and then we reverse. So four and five, and then reverse. And five. Ankles, right ankle clockwise 10 times. Five, 10, reverse, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. The other foot, one direction, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and reverse, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We also do those arch arch raises. So come up on your toes and raise your arms. Hold for five seconds. Come down as you put your heels down. Raise raise your toes. So you're just going to kind of extend your toes upwards as you raise your as you put your heels down. So inhale, heels go up. Stretch your arches, five second hold. I can't see your uh, feet. Okay, hold on. Oh, but I also want to see your, the rest of your body. So my arms are just going up. As my, my heels rise, my arms go up. Okay, it's very, okay. it's not that hard. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then as I go down, I just raise my toes. See? Oh, I see, I see, I see. That's it. Yeah, it's hard to get the whole body because then I'll go too far and then you won't see me anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so That's just do that a few times, okay? I want yeah. to try a new, a new one with you today, which is a balancing pose. So while you're standing, just take... So this is the... Num there's a number of levels at which you can do it. Let me see if I can... Yeah. So this is the first level where you just take your right foot and you put it on the left leg and the idea is not to hold anything but if you really can't you can hold a chair this is first level okay the second level is to go up here or if you can do it so if you can do it the third level is to go up here so you tuck your heel into your thigh and you know the most important thing when you do this is to fix your gaze on something fix your gaze on one spot and don't move it from there somewhere in front of you and then the fourth so if you can <laughs> sheesh so this Once is again. this is really important not only for your feet but also for your balance in your brain and then the last step is just to raise your arms like this and hold this for 10 seconds but like I said the trick is to make sure you don't move your gaze Eyes must be fixed. And if eyes are fixed, then it's easier to do this. And, and Sophia, it's absolutely fine to begin here. Oh. This is where we begin. And this is the tree pose. It's called the tree pose. And this is how we start. And then we work our way up till we can finally tuck it into our 
thigh on the other leg. Okay. So let's you know, once upon a time, I could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get it. Just practice one or two times. You'll get it. It's just balance. The PT makes me do this, you know, when we go for PT because it's really good for the feet. And then the other side. And arms go up. My gaze is fixed. Very good. Oh, so this side is better. Yeah. Do so you think I have problem balancing on the right? You generally, they say that if one side of the body is weak, it's the opposite brain, opposite, opposite hemisphere of the brain that needs more work, more, more practice, basically. Yeah. So I just want you to even grab something initially for Pia, just try it, holding something, and then work your way into my know, IV pole. <laughs> Are you in your IV infusion pole? <laughs> I will. Now, in, when you're waiting between patients, you'll be doing that. <laughs> like a pole. Yes, I will be dancing in front of them while talking to them. I'll be like, here, I am learning IV pole yeah. yoga. Good. I will put the camera down so you can see me. Okay. So I'm going to pad my mat for maximal comfort. Yeah. For my knees. This one that I had is called a Mexican blanket. It's like very, it's cotton, so it doesn't slip. There, there should be no skid in the blanket. And oh, really? Yeah. This one. This, this is like a ski slope. My uh -huh. my blanket is like a ski slope. Yours looks like a very slippery one. Oh, this is like the comfort one, you know? Huh. When you want to be like super, super comfortable. So look at yourself in the screen and make sure you're on this in this tabletop position. Flat back, elbows under shoulders, knees under. And if any adjustment is needed, make sure you look like a table. And then begin by just articulating the spine, which basically means we go up and down, up. Spine goes up, head goes down, head goes up, spine goes down and tailbone goes up, out your back. Keep doing this with your breath. Exhale, when you go up. Inhale, when you arch your back. And we do this. What is this position called in yoga? Uh, cat cow. No, in in like in, in uh, other than that, in Sanskrit, what oh, is Sanskrit, it? Sanskrit, it's uh, uh, the Marjari Asana. Marjari is cat in Sanskrit, and uh, and I've forgotten the word for cow. I mean, I've forgotten the name for the pose. There's many poses with cow. In English, it's called twerking. In English, it's called cat and cow. No, in English, it's called twerking. It's called what? Twerking. Twerking. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now come back to tabletop, which is your neutral spine position. This is your neutral position. From here, we are going to do a few variations of this cat cow. So the first variation is right hand goes up and left leg goes up. Now, when you're lifting your left leg, it's straight and it's going up. It's not down here. It's like here. And the hand is parallel to it. Okay. Hold this for a few seconds and then bring it down. Now, practice the other side. Left hand goes up and right leg. Spine is straight. You're looking straight ahead and leg is high up. Okay, now we're going to build on this. Ah, one second, one second. I have to do the other side. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Very Definitely. Good. So now, <laughs> what we're going to do is a little variation on this. So we do out like this, right hand, left leg. In, when I say in, the elbow comes and meets the knee. Okay. When I say out, they go out again. And the breathing? And neutral. Yeah, one sec. Just learn the posture and then I'll teach you with the breathing. So okay. the other side, left arm goes up, right leg. 
elbow to knee, in, out again, and back to neutral. And this time with the breath, okay? So back to tabletop. Inhale, right arm, left leg. Exhale, right elbow, left knee. Inhale, and back to neutral. Now the other side. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, and back to neutral. Try it one more time. So first, inhale, right arm, left leg. Exhale, elbow to knee. What? Same thing. Then back to back to right arm, left leg, inhale, and neutral. Other side, inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, and back to neutral. So this is also very good for not only balance of the brain, but also the back. Let's take a child's pose. Take your knees wide apart. Rest your hips on your heels. Slowly melt your body into the mat. Five deep breaths here. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And last one. Stay, stay there, but just take a peek at me and I'll show you what we have to do next. Just take a peek at me. So see how my arms are forward? Yeah. You stay here and I'm just going to move my arms to the left like this. Oh. Body doesn't move at all. Okay. My hips are still exactly where they are. I just slid my arms over. So first you stretch out on the left side. You're stretching the right side of the body. Take three breaths here and then hop over to the opposite side. Stretch to the right. You feel that stretch on the side body? Yeah. Okay. That's the idea. Really nice. Really nice. Yeah. This is a nice one. This feels really delicious. Come back. What is this? Uh, what is this position? What is this stretch called? Oh my God! It's okay, I have to go and refer to my notes. Um, I mean, I I can give you the name later, but basically, you're stretching your side body. It's a lateral body stretch. Okay. Yeah. It's a uh, maybe it's called changing your GPS. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should invent new names for all the poses. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make like a, a tutorial for <laughs> your exercise. No, I give you new steps. Look up names and tell you if you're interested in knowing. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go into downward facing dog. So tuck your toes in. Start. Do I have to do that? Okay, I'll do it. You 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 can do it. We won't hang out too long in it. Okay. okay. What I wanted to show you. Just lift your knees, you're, you're like about to go into downward dog and you don't go into downward dog like this. You see? Uh -huh. what I, you see? Uh -huh. Wait, let me move this blanket. So I just lifted my knees off the mat and I'm on my toes. My heels are up. I see. So this is called bear pose. And this is really good cardio. One of Make sure you all get it. We're going to bear, bear as a bear, B E A R. Oh. So this is my pose. Like it's an animal pose. I'm on all fours, right? Yeah. This is a strength pose. Like you need a lot of strength to stay here. Which I don't have. And then come down. And now, after a couple of breaths, go into downward facing dog. When we come into downward facing dog, the first thing we do is... Oh, bend. I could do it. That was nice. Okay. Yeah. Then? Pedal your the feet. bicycle. Is that the bicycle? Yeah. I'm calling it pedal your feet. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So that is your calf stretch. Uh, Just make sure 
your posture is like an inverted V. Like yeah. This. So you're not here. You're not here. You're like this. So that's the only thing you have to remember. You to, you know, feel and look like an inverted V. Yeah. So from here, let's just go into our lunge. So take the right foot forward. And this is high lunge. You know, when your knee is up and then we put the knee down and we straighten our back. Straighten your back and let your body drop. Just let your body drop and look straight. And you're feeling it in your left hip flexor for a few breaths here. Put your hands back and hamstring stretch. So all I did was slide my foot a couple inches forward, bring my toes up and pull my body to the back of the room. Really feel it in my hamstrings. Oh. Yeah. We have to get at least four or five hamstring stretches in, in every yoga class. We do it one way, then we do it another way, then we do it the third way. We keep working on those hamstrings. Okay. So we came on the lunge to the hamstring. Now let's do this as a flow. A flow means you inhale here, Exhale here. Inhale here. Exhale here. So we do this five times. Inhale. Exhale. No, how? How was it? I'm sorry. Can you do it again? Yeah, see, see, this is my lunge, right? This is my lunge. I'm inhaling, looking up. Exhaling, rounding my back, doing the hamstring movement that I've just taught you. So we just put both the movements together and converted it into a flow. Right? Got it, Sophia? How do you go back? Do you go back all the way? Okay, so when I go back, look, this is where I was. Okay. Yeah, that I got. Okay. Then I just lifted my, I put my weight on the heel and lifted my toes up to point up to the ceiling. Okay? Got mm -hmm. this much? My foot is oh. up, right? Yeah. And then I'm just pretending I'm going to sit down, but I'm not. I'm just straightening this leg and I feel this whole leg getting stretched. It's, it's nothing but a stretching of the right leg. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just stop me whenever you need to ask something. Okay. Then, I... then what I want you to do is like you're like this. Take your left hand down on the mat, right by your foot, right by your foot, and take your right hand and go up like this. I'm getting, ah, excellent, Sophia. Yes, you also got it. So that's a, just try to get what we, what maximum bang for buck we can get out of this lunge posture. There's another couple stretches we do from the lunge. I'm just going to show them to you. Try them. So take this right foot and walk it to the edge of the mat. So I'm going towards the right edge of my mat. Okay. And then I'm going to put my hands down. Both my hands are on the left of my foot. My foot is on the right. Both my hands are on the left. Okay. I'm going to take my knee up and slide it down. Slide it as far back as it goes. And you can just stay here. This is called lizard. Oh. So this is lizard when you're, you know, your one leg is back. The other leg is, the other leg is kind of opening up. The knee is opening up. Right. That's fine. That's perfect. And just the slightly advanced version of this pose is to bring your forearms down like this. Oh, really? Are, right. are, the knees are back. Where, where is your, both your knees are back? No, 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 no. One only. It's a lunge. So remember we were in lunge before. Yes, yes. yes. I haven't changed. I just opened it up like this. So. Oh, let me, I see, I see. Let me show you from this side. So this was my lunge. I just opened up this leg as I went down. 
Okay. Oh, I see. I see. I see. The other knee was exactly where it was before. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So just a variation on the lunge. Now come back into tabletop. And let's do the other side. Take your left foot forward into lunge, hands on either side of the foot. Okay. Take your hands and rest them on the knee and look straight, letting your pelvic uh, region drop to the floor. So this is when it's not dropped and this is when it's dropped. And when I drop it, I feel the stretch in my right hip, the front of my hip, which is called the hip flexor. And I really breathe. cool. I breathe five times here. Very, very good stretch for the hips. Hips and hamstrings. Like we have many classes in yoga, which are called, okay, we're doing a hips and hamstrings class today. So they do all these stretches, just opening up the hips for one hour. Wow. Then put your hands back down on the mat. Slide your left foot a few inches forward. Raise your toes so that they go up towards the ceiling. And see, this is my body when it's forward, and this is my body pulling back and straightening my left leg. See? So hamstring stretch. So it's a very simple move. I'm going to have you do it as a flow after a minute. You're going to go here, inhale, and you're going to go here, exhale. First we do it separately, and then we pull it, put, put them both together. So let's do it. Put your foot down, hands down. So see, normally when we did the lunge, we put the hands up on the knee and we did this, right? Yeah. For the flow, we don't need to do that. We just keep the hands down. Mm -hmm. Go inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Two more, inhale. Exhale. This is where my knee pad really helps on my right knee. You know? Yeah. When I am uh, keeping a cushion under my right knee. A cushion or a pad really helps. And then let's just try the lizard on the other side. So basically take your left foot and bring it to the outside edge of the mat. Bring both your hands on the inside of the left foot. I slide my right knee back just a little. And then I can stay here, look front, look straight ahead. Or I can come down on my forearms, opening up my left knee a little bit. And then make, putting my hands back on the mat and making my way back into tabletop. From tabletop, you can come into child's pose for a few seconds. Child's pose is called the resting pose, balasana. Balasana, this is if you know the kids, kids always rest like this when they when they sleep, sometimes they tuck because this is a very relaxing pose because it's kind of stretching out your spine and it's also like curling up like fetal position and gives you a sense of great comfort and relaxation. Yeah, I love the child's pose. Wow. That's my favorite pose so far. All Everyone loves child's pose. That's why it's actually called a resting pose. You can rest in it. Sometimes yeah. when you a class and it becomes too hard, like after when they start doing crazy stuff, and then the teacher says, "Okay, everyone who can't, who doesn't want to do this, just rest in child's pose." So you're in every yoga class. You're allowed to go into child's pose and rest. It's not. Um, it's not like a bad thing. Nobody will judge you for that. Just know your body, and when you feel like the teacher is going a bit too fast, then just go into child's pose. Okay, or if you feel your body is heating up too much, you know when they do like twelve Surya Namaskars and one one shot, and you heat up too much, you have to honor your body. You can't do it. So now come on your knees like this, and take your right foot out with your toes pointing up, and just slide your foot out towards the window, like towards the right. Just slide your foot out. So now you're going to feel the stretch here in the inner thigh. Oh, yeah. 
And the body is straight, okay? The body is not leaning right now. It's just straight. Only thing, like, if you're not feeling it, keep sliding your foot forward. Stop where you feel it. Stop where you start feeling the stretch. The other knee is just resting. Nothing is going on with the other knee. Now take this left arm and add a side body stretch. Yes. Oh. And you wow. can go down as okay. much as you like, Lila. So basically you're getting this stretch and you're also getting the stretch here, okay? Yeah. Now switch, so bring the right knee back, take the left leg out, I'm sliding my heel on my mat, Keep sliding till, I, I, I do it very gently because I don't want to like suddenly stretch myself too much. And I stay there for a few breaths. And then I take my right hand up. Yeah. So this is Kandasana or pillar pose, which basically stretches your inner thighs. Now we're going to do Malasana, which is this pose where you sit in a squat. My feet are pointing a little bit outside. You can raise your heels. You can rest your heels on a blanket or a cushion if this is hard for you. Flat feet are obviously the desired. Now I'm going to take my elbows and stick them inside my knees and then push my knees out. Bring my hands to prayer and towards my heart. Spine is straight. Look straight. You must be feeling the stretch in your lower back. That's, that's when it's done right. And I lift my spine up so it's not like this. It's like this. So my hips are drawing closer to the ground and my neck and head is pulling upwards. Five breaths here. So they have like something known as the five essential stretches for flexibility. In yoga, and this is one of them. Like they say, if you, do, if you do nothing else, you have to do these five stretches. This is one of them, okay? It's a really important one. So after your five breaths are over, you can pull yourself out of it. So, you know, this reminds me of the, you know, when you were, when we were little and the teacher would make you, has your teacher ever made you burga? Morga. You know, but that that is like outside. You have to hold oh, your ears also. Yoga is a very good yoga pose, actually. Yeah, I know. So Murga is uh, what 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 pose is that? This can this pose turn into Murga? Yeah. So the Murga becomes basically you're taking your hands out, right? Or no, you're taking your hands. Yeah. Yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. Ears, your ears like yeah. that. <laughs> That's a Murga pose. Haven't haven't done it for fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Murga pose is if you do something wrong. You know, <laughs> or you... Now we take our he uh, soles of our feet and we join them together. Oh, stay seated. Okay. And then we take both our hands and go around the feet and interlace the hands around the feet. Then I pull my heels towards my body, towards my groin. And I stretch my body upwards, bringing my knees back. Knees, knees are here, they go down. Body is here, it goes up. Opens up the thighs, the spine. Again, a very important stretch, the butterfly it's called. Why is it called butterfly? Because once we get here, we do a flap, flap. Oh, yeah. 30 seconds. And then, what I want you to do is take your right knee on top of your left knee like this. You're just crossing. So my, my right leg is like this. My left leg comes, so the knees are aligned, okay? Then I'm just going to take my arm on my left knee. This arm, left arm goes back and I just turn my body. You can even take the crook of your arm and just hug your knee like this. Hug your knee. Right arm, left leg, and turn yourself to the back of the knee. 
As you're turning, make sure your left hip is going okay. round the other, and then we make mom do the other one. So this time, right leg comes on top, grab the right knee with the crook of my elbow, and turn back. Or a spinal twist. Are you did it on this side, right, Sophia? Yeah, on one side I could do it. Crazy, that's that's awesome. Let me okay. see if I can attempt it again on the other side. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I do. I could do it on the other side too. Okay, good. But another way to do the spinal twist is just lie down like this and raise both your knees to the ceiling. Spread your arms out, so the, both arms are out and palms to the floor. So I'm just laying down like this, and then I take both my knees and I drop them to the right, and I look left. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah? So this yes. Is the same. I can see. We yes. Twist. So whether you did it sitting or lying down, it's the same thing. Same thing. Oh, it's so good. Oh, no, one second. You need yeah, back. No. Whenever you're ready, bring them back up. And we drop them to the left. Drop them to the left. Five breaths and then just lay down flat on your back. Spread your legs about six to eight inches apart. Your hands are resting on the side of your body, six inches away from your body. And uh, just lay there for a few seconds. Rest, Shavasana. This is called Shavasana or corpse pose. You're basically in a yoga class, you died. <laughs> And rebirth. <laughs> and then rebirth. The new, the new you is born. The better way. Nice. So Shavasana is actually uh, not a pose where you like, it's a meditation. So basically you don't just switch off. You bring your attention to your nose. You bring your attention to your breath. As with any meditation, you start with the breath. I want you to focus on your belly in your mind. As you inhale, feel the belly fill up and it's rising and going towards the ceiling. As you exhale, the belly is falling down towards the floor. Inhale, belly fills up. Exhale, belly goes down. Inhale, belly goes up. Exhale, belly goes down. And this time I'm going to put on the metronome and we're going to do it to a count. So we are basically starting our breath work in this posture. I love this posture. I might go back to sleep. <laughs> if you go to sleep, that's fine. So we're going to inhale to five and exhale to eight. Okay. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember to fill the belly as you inhale. One, two, three, 
four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Try two rounds by yourself without me cueing you. Just count in your head. Inhale to five, exhale to eight. When you finish your exhale, you stop. Roll over to your right side and curl up and just lay there for a couple 30 seconds. And then whenever you're ready, make yourself come back into seated position. I'll start with breath work, uh, with the coffee breath. Sorry, we already did the Deekshwasam, which is the abdominal breathing. So let's do the coffee breathing. So remember, we go 15 times. I didn't do all my coffee just for this. <laughs> so I'm exhaling out from my nostrils forcefully. And as I exhale, my belly gets back in. You're pumping your belly. And 15. And rest. So in between the... Uh, Kapal Bhati or the skull shining breath, we can also do a breath hold. So in between this, the repetitions, I can take a deep inhale and hold. When I hold, I just drop my chin and this locks in the breath inside my lungs. Yes. And just hold for 30 seconds. <laughs> The second round, okay? Second round of coffee. We just have a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll let you go in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Second round. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then take a deep breath in. And hold. Hold for as long as you can. The pumping action gives you the ability to hold your breath for longer. So just hold it. Whenever you feel out of breath, just release the throat lock and release the breath. And then we do the third cycle. So this was Bessie. So the third cycle again, the same thing, 15 times. Begin, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, oh, 15, sorry. <laughs> and then take a deep breath in. And when you're ready to release, lift your chin and exhale. Have you tried the humming bee before? We did, right? Yeah, humming. So you gently close the ears. 
you don't like you know this the skin that is on top of the ear you just push yeah. back yeah yeah and then gently close your eyes just inhale and then mm, like a bee you hum mm, and feel the vibrations in your like in the middle part of your forehead so this is how it goes it looks like this mm. And I hum as long as I can. Okay, got it? I see. Instructions. We're going to do it five times. We'll inhale, hum as long as possible. Inhale again while keeping our ears closed. So you really feel the vibrations in your head. Right. Good. So that hum, humming humming bee is very good for relaxation. Actually, secretes melatonin in the brain, and uh, is a great one to do even when you're trying to go to sleep. Oh, really? So we can do it at night. At night, natural melatonin. I can tell people do it if you have sleeping problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hum to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Alternate nostril breathing. Close the right nostril. Are you? Yeah, I think yes. I'll just tell you how, how we are going to do it. We're not going to do any holding. All, all I'm doing is closing the right nostril. Breathe in left. Switch. Close left. Open right. Breathe out right. Breathe in right. Switch. Exhale left. So I'm just going to keep switching. I'm using my ring finger and my thumb. And I keep switching like this. Okay. So let's, let's try it together. So I'm closing my right. Exhale completely out of your left. Inhale left. Switch. Exhale right. Inhale right. Switch. Exhale left. Inhale left. Switch. Exhale right. Inhale right, switch, exhale left, inhale left, switch, exhale right, inhale right, switch, exhale left, inhale left, switch, exhale right. Inhale right, switch, exhale left, inhale left, switch, exhale right, inhale right, switch, exhale left completely. So this is also very, very good pranayama for balancing both sides of the brain. Okay. And this Alternate nostril breathing is actually the gateway into meditation because when both sides of the brain are balanced, they say both the meridians in the left side and the right side are balanced, then the energy flows through the central channel. So that's the the, the science behind the, you know, the body work and then the breath work leading into meditation. So we'll do five minutes of meditation. So I'm going to put on the timer and I'm going to have you do your transcendental today because we want to just want to keep practicing different types of meditations. So I think you will just go into your mantra. And when the mind wanders, bring it back to the mantra, right? And uh, yeah. 
So I'm just going to sit with you here for five minutes. I put on the timer. Find your correct posture for meditation. And begin. Notice where your mind is, bring it back if it wandered off. Notice where your mind is, bring it back. Notice where the mind is. Just one more minute, make it count. And you may bring your hands to prayer. Rub your hands together. Gently place them on your eyes. May all beings everywhere be peaceful and happy. Peace, peace, peace. 